users. Van Mariani was a drink that was created in the 1860s and it was a wine very different from all the others. Van Mariani, you see, was enriched with the leaves from the erythroxylum plant. And erythroxylum is the scientific name of a tropical shrub, better known as coca. Van Mariani was created by the French chemist Angelo Mariani. His intentions were pure. This scientist first heard about the beneficial properties of coca from a published paper by the Italian neurologist Paolo Montecazza. Convinced that the leaves of this plant would revolutionize the world of medicine, he immediately set to work. After what I assume must have been very enthusiastic research, Mariani created a drink made of Bordeaux wine and coca leaves. The alcohol in the wine acted as a solvent, naturally extracting cocaine from the leaves, altering the effect on the neurological system of those who consumed it. Soon, Angelo Mariani started marketing his special drink, known as Van Tonique Mariani. Van Mariani's adverts claimed that it would restore the strength, the energy and the well-being of all those who consumed it. It was promoted as a cure for everything, from toothache to depression. Van Mariani was so successful that it also inspired the creation of the Coca-Cola soft drink. This was created in 1886 by the pharmacist John S. Pemberton in Atlanta in the United States. This product was originally named Pemberton's French Wine Coca. Ironically, that exact same year Atlanta voted in favour of the Prohibition Act. Pemberton responded by replacing the wine in his drink with sugar for a non-alcoholic version. Also ironically, no one objected to the active coca in the drink, which remained a key component of Coca-Cola well into the 20th century. However, Van Mariani made a splash internationally. Writers such as Jules Verne, Alexandre Dumas and Arthur Conan Doyle drank it for inspiration. Inventor Thomas Edison drank it because he helped him work harder. The French Prime Minister at the time, Jules Melan, regularly enjoyed Van Mariani despite the fact that he was conservative and held very strong views against alcohol consumption. Perhaps the biggest surprise was that two of Van Mariani's greatest fans were leaders of the Catholic Church. The first one to try it was Pope Pius IX, but the most ardent fan of Van Mariani was his successor, Pope Leo XIII. Apparently, Pope Leo always carried a flask full of Van Mariani concealed in his robes. But do not imagine that he hid his enthusiasm for his favorite wine. Van Mariani was so fanatically supported by Pope Leo that he even appeared on an advert to promote it. He was quite literally the poster pope for coca wine. Not only that, but he invited Angelo Mariani to the Vatican where he was awarded a gold medal. Well, what do you know? It turns out no one is infallible. So let's get into this bottle, shall we? No, I can't do this. I'm sorry. Clive, get me some real wine, please. Well, there goes that sponsorship.
much better. If this Van Mariani story teaches us anything at all, it is this. Wine is a natural product, but also by its very nature, it is absolutely perfect. No chemical improvements are needed. So remember, tasters, drink real wine. And if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up Subscribe to the channel for more Wine Scribble Wine videos and I will see you next week. Cheers.